Irish, because they do paint a lot of irises. Okay, now, with a backlit flower like this, if you all look at real close at this photograph here, especially, say, on that petal on that side, you see a real fine, light line. See? On the photograph right over here. In fact, pretty much the whole flower is outlined with just a real bright little line, and that's what makes the difference in the backlighting. Even if you're painting, uh, say, a person with silhouetted with the sun behind them, it looks like they have a little halo around their head, you know. And flowers the same way. And I'm not going to finish the whole flower here, I don't think. It would be nice if I could. If I could do that that fast, I'd make a lot of money on it. But you paint the flower up to the background line. And that allows you to leave this very, very fine line of light in there. Okay, now I'm going to just paint this one petal sort of as an example. Okay, the other thing is, um, you will notice, and again, I'd have to pass the photograph around, and, and where's Patty? I'm right here. Oh, no wonder I couldn't see you. You were hiding. Okay. I got a TV screen. Okay. I'm sitting where I can see the monitor. I figured you'd be here, you know, hanging on my every word. I'm hanging on your every word, just from here. Okay. Um, in your painting, you painted in a lot of the sort of veininess on the flower. Uh -huh. uh, it's not really necessary. If you look at, um, say, the little section here on this petal out here, uh -huh. if you look at the photograph, you'll, you'll see that the, the structure of the flower is indicated by the by the edge of this dark to light transition. I don't know a good way to phrase that. Um, but you don't have to paint in the veins. What you do is you paint in the shapes and you let the, the veins and the flower be indicated by the shapes you're painting in rather than putting them in explicitly. Okay. Okay. Uh, that way you, it doesn't look labored, but you get what looks like just as much detail to people. Now I got this really wet. I'm not doing a very good job of it. Right now. Okay, I need to make some nice purple here. And for that I might actually need a clean palette. Well, I'm really running out of time here. I think the others are going to be smaller scale. That sounds good, man. Squeaky It's breaking down the swamp. Maybe. Crocodile in the swamp? Actually, they bark. They bark when they're mating. They bark? And, okay. I think so, like dogs. Whoop. <laughs> That's I've, no, no. Not woof. <laughs> well, you you did say when they're mating. When they're mating. I. Season, I, when they're in season. That's an awful picture. Can you imagine? No, yeah. Quite violent. I don't think that I want to. I'm going to watch TV. <laughs> National Geographic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All things considered, that's something I'd rather not think about. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not a really good purple, but... Now, I have a wet wash, and I have a 
a brush with some sort of semi-dry, pretty intense paint on it here. And it's a tiny brush. And I'm outlining just outside this wet wash. And some places the line touches the wash and other places it doesn't. And what that does is it sort of gives the impression of a very sharp edge and and the beginning of the sort of veins in the in the flower petal. Can you see that, Patty? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I'll make it darker here. That's what you want to do. This is a this is a business. You know. I'm the efficiency expert. That's yes. what we're here for. You know. Time and motion studies. You know. Wausau. <laughs> wa 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 wa. Wausau. Wausau. By the time things get south, they really get south. Things things are going downhill pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that's too dark, but since it's wet, I can just go ahead and change anything I want, pretty much anywhere I want, anytime I want, because it hasn't frozen in place yet. And to get this feeling of light, you gotta, you have to be pretty subtle with the, with the values in this. Um, oops, that's too yellow. But again, since I'm doing this real wet, I can kind of get away with some of stuff. Now, I'm watching this, waiting for. the sheen to sort of disappear from the paper. Because when it does, I'm going to go back in there and bloom that. Mm. And it dries to like a matte finish right after that sheen is shining? Uh, yeah, just when it stops shining. You know, that's why I kind of keep doing this with pictures. I'm looking to see how much water is laid on the surface of the paper. When the last of the water starts to disappear on the paper, that's when it's going to bloom. And it's good to know when it's going to bloom so you can either force it to do it or prevent it from doing it. And the other thing is if you want to make it bloom, you've got to be careful about how much water you put in because that determines how far the bloom is going to go. In this case, I'm going to want to be putting um, veins in the flower so I don't want it to go real far so I use a little brush and I'll make sure there's not too much water on it. Uh, it's not quite ready yet. Now, give me a third round. Well, that was being a little too ambitious there, wasn't I? I don't know, it's too early, I think, but I'll give it a shot. And it's just water, of course, you know. I shake off that drop, because if it, the whole drop gets in there, then it really goes real far. Um, the nice thing about this is if I mess it up, if I do it too soon, I can always go back in and put in some more paint. That's not really real impressive, but... Uh, it's because I did it too soon. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to block a couple things in and then I'm, I'm going to 
depart this for a different picture. Um, one nice thing about this is this, there's this little patch of color in here, all the really intense part of the colors in this one little area. And I, I would exaggerate that. Um, a little bit of orange, a little bit of red. You know. And you don't have to be afraid of sort of slopping colors over in the interior of the flower where it's relatively dark here. Uh, it just goes as, it layers on other colors and it looks okay. Uh, you want to avoid being really precise and painting one tiny little part of the flower and then painting another little part of the flower. And, I mean, I'm right here. Oh, <laughs> she, she snuck up. <laughs> oh. I snuck up on you. <laughs> <laughs> You were oh, really concentrating on what you were doing. Oh, when so I when I held it up, up when I held it up to the camera, I embarrassed you. I was still you back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You shamed me into coming. Mission down. accomplished. <laughs> All right. And then there's also a, kind of a nice, almost greenish tone down in here that. Uh, in this area, you know, where it gets a lot of skylight. I'm just doing this to give you an idea of where the color would be in, in the painting if I were finishing it up. Because uh, the background is, you know, pretty blah. And so you want to have your, you know, your interest in here. Right. But by painting the background in first, and allowing you room to leave this little white edge, it gives you the, the chance to really make it look backlit, which you can't do in a white paper like what you're doing. I mean, it doesn't really have that light to it, the glow. Um, and that's why I paint the background in first. Now over here, as I said, you, you need to pick out, okay, what are you going to leave unpainted and what are you going to lift out? And I, I chose to leave these sections unpainted and then what I would excuse me then what I would do would be to lift out the border the edge of the flower here not too much more you know about 15 minutes behind here but uh, you know, see what I'm doing here and they don't need to be as bright as these other ones do so so I could go ahead and lift them. I've got to get one of those little scrubbers. Yeah, they're, they're handy little things. And then there's you have some other intense color that you could put in. You look for excuses in a picture like this where you have basically a fairly raw background. You look for places where you can put in some some bright colors. Sort of an excuse to put some color in, like there. Right. See what. You know. And it really, by, by localizing the color, it draws your attention to it better. Um, now somebody, it was a book that, that Jenny showed me, um, I forget what her name was, it was something about making color sing or something like that. And uh, it's actually a good book on color, isn't it? She pointed out that basically, in order to make one part of the painting look colorful, you have to have a lot of mud on the rest of the picture. You know what I mean? It's, if, everything, if everything is primary colors, then nothing looks bright. It just looks like a kindergarten room. But if you have a lot of neutrals, grays, and then you have some bright patches of color here and there, then they really pop out. Okay. Actually, see that yellow? I do now. My question is this right here. There is a little bit. I'm exaggerating it a lot. But, uh, uh, which, what your question well, is, what, what? This is going to stay diffused like that, and would you just like blend this down into it, or? or no, no, it's it's it? there, but it's subtly. I mean, I would put the flower in. And it's kind of blue. And, you know. 
Oh, I bet the shadows over here, which I'm not going to put in. Um, so that has a nice glow behind it now, yeah. the background. Right. Well, it looks lighter because you put the darker. That was kind of the, the point. Yeah. You know, um, Figure that one. See now, then what I would do if I had time to dry this is then I'd bring the dark and the light of you know the stem and the bulb up here mm -hmm. and, and the stem and the, whatever they call this thing. Uh, and that'll be darker behind this and then of course you put in the little purple frillies and stuff. But, but my objective with a picture like that is to try to get the light and the glow. Uh, more than to get the little details. I mean, they'll come in, but again, I would paint all of these details, like over here, uh -huh. you know, I would do, I would wet the paper, and then i paint them in. Like that. So is that way you can paint in a bunch of details, you can do it real fast and scribbly. And they look fine. They look more, more flower-like than if you sit and paint them and copy every one on a, you know, on a dry piece of paper. That makes sense. You know, you did not have to say that because I was already thinking it. Excuse me. You said what? Talking to my friend, she accuses me of counting everything I paint, and, and oh. I don't. <laughs> She uh -huh. loves to say I do. <laughs> yes, there's a very, very old song called Inchworm. I don't know oh, yes. if you've ever heard of it. <laughs> two and two are four, four and four are eight. It's measuring the marigolds. <laughs> no. Four and four are eight. You'd think you'd stop and appreciate how beautiful they are. You know? Anyway, there we go. Don't count, just lighten up a little bit. All right, now, um, since I'm way behind time, uh, how about the, uh, can I can I do the doggy here for, you know, just for fun? Let's not forget the clouds. I'm, I'm not gonna forget the clouds. It's two o'clock, uh, but, but what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna do the doggy, is that I have to give a little time for the, uh, Masking. I need the mask to dry. Do you want to look at the saran wrap and see what's happening? Or is it too soon? I'd let it go. Oops, I got a. Jerry, I should have used your weapon here. Oh, it's already there. That's why it's not in your pocket. Yeah, it was not in your pocket. I think my, my problem here is I painted that just too big. I should have done it small. So, keeping that in mind, uh, I'm going to go smaller if that's okay. I'm feeling a little chastened by running over time here. trying to do right now. I'm going to sort of kill the white on the paper a little bit here. And the picture's just in my top reference. I didn't want real glaring white. Beside. And now I'll work on the clouds for a while while we uh, let, let the doggy splatters dry. Okay. <clears throat> and again, I'm I'm uh, gonna work a little smaller because it's it's more the light and the technique that you need to know than 
all the details, right? We tell ourselves. I wonder if that's... Eh, no, let it go. The longer you let it go, the better it is. It's still close. Hmm? Oh, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. I was wondering about that. Horizon's pretty much smack in the middle of this picture. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bump up the top of the picture a little bit. Just for, I'll give myself a little more room for clouds. So. Okay. Sounds like Sasha out there. You know? I've just changed the picture a little bit. Okay. I'll just go ahead and be dirty here. Doesn't really show up that much, does it? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Just wetting your paper for the whole area of the sky. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to wet the whole picture. Sit for a minute. I may change the color of the picture a little bit. Or maybe not. We'll see how it comes out. Now, <clears throat> when I put the water on the picture, you notice that I waited for a little while. Mm -hmm. That's important. Because uh, you do want the water to soak in before you start this process. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. Because we're going to be making those clouds with some paper towel. Viva paper towel. <laughs> I need to ask those people if I can get they loyalty. Should sponsor yeah. They should sponsor me. They should sponsor me. There'd be an awful lot of artists they'd be sponsoring. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I could go around to workshops and shows with a spandex jacket to say Viva. <laughs> Viva. Or, or you know, a man that's shaped like a big roll of towels. Like these. Viva 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 no, I was thinking like the NASCAR pit crews. Oh, you know, one fancy. Yeah. I never really understood baseball caps because I wear them out in the sun and my ears still sunburn yeah. in the back of my neck. They do, yeah. Yeah, I wear a, an Indiana Jones kind of hat, you know, either more or less formal versions of it. Because I like to have a brim all around my head so nothing sounds more you know, like that. But, uh, oh, that's purple. 
That is purple, that's why. I got some purple paint there, guys. <laughs> No, that was ultramarine violet. Not what I wanted. It's a ghost of some had it on the edge. unusual picture. It no, it was right sitting. down in the bottom down there. So. At one time, I must have used a lot of it. I can't remember when. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of raw sienna and ultramarine blue and then maybe I can uh, get back to some reasonable color here. Darker in the water than it is in the sky. I mean, we talked about the water is not a perfect reflector, you know. Sorry about that, but I may need those paints. So. Let me just bring them closer and lay them flat. How's that? You did that for Dwight. Oh. Okay, I'll blame Dwight then. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's the one that's being good. It's Jerry getting in trouble. <laughs> oh, pretty well. This is a little intense blue, isn't it? But this is a really blue picture, so... Usually in this kind of situation, the blue that's closer to the horizon has a, a little bit more of a yellowish tone to it. I'll probably use some fallow blue, God forbid, and a little bit of burnt sienna. Oops, that's not burnt sienna. I've muddied my color so much I forget what's what. Uh, Put some patches of this sort of dirtier blue in here. And, and if it's above the horizon, it's got to be below the horizon. All right, now, if this gets in anybody's way, I'm sorry, but it's got to be there for a minute. Okay, I'll put it on the floor. Actually, I really want to suck something up. Yeah. If it's not soaking it up quite enough, you get it a little bit wet. Then it really, really soaks up. Alright. You know, we sort of put more paint on the paper and made it darker than we wanted it to be because I knew that a lot of it's coming right back off this way. And since it's reflected, whatever you do, it doesn't have to be accurate to the photograph, but it needs to be symmetrical. So, for instance, I can do this sort of sweepy thing here. As long as I do it the same above and below the horizon line, everything's fine, okay? 
And I can take out a little, say, bright spot right in here, and if I do it right up there, well, it's not coming out up there. But... All right, now, very quick, thank you. Right in the middle of that time, okay. All right, now, this is still obviously really damp. Um, I've got about 15 minutes, I'm going to do this pretty quick here, so. Um, now I can come back with a scrub brush later on and actually whiten these up even more. Um, in fact, I could probably do it right now just to move my scrub brush. Hmm. I wonder if I left it at somebody's table. It's got a long handle. There it is. Hmm? No, it's not. Right. Hmm. I've got a little. You got a little scrub brush? Yeah. Somewhere? Oh, gee. It's got a yellow one. That wasn't any good. Hmm. I'm sure I remember taking that to somebody's table and I don't know. Oh. Thank you. There you go, that'll work fine. Uh, anybody who sees a brush that around and it's got one of these little blue dots on it, it's my brush. Oh, that's that's clever. Clever. I have some good idea. Let me see. Oh, Jerry brought me one. I do. Oh, Jerry said blue right? paint on it. <laughs> okay. You didn't give me a clean scrub brush. Oh, that was built three weeks ago. I didn't have to clean it. So you have dirty weeks and clean weeks? <laughs> That's an interesting lifestyle. And Billy, if it's old dirt, it doesn't, it's not, he's not responsible for it. <laughs> I can't do that now. This is my clean week. Come around next week. No. Uh, it's got all sorts of stuff on the brush, but you kind of get the idea that you can go back and lighten it up more. With the scrub brush, you'd have a hard time doing this from just the absolute real intense blue there. But, but so you can bring it back almost to white that way. And I'll just go ahead and do that again because I'm probably not going to finish this up. And if I did, I'd have to put that through the washing machine. Millie, <laughs> yeah. go get the bleach. Okay. Now I'm going to need a bigger puddle of paint, and I don't want to do it with a little brush, so I'm going to go ahead and do it with a big brush. And... Oh, red. some green, that's all I can get rid of the red. I've seen y'all do this. Well, it's a little too red, I'll put some green in. So green, I'll put some red on pretty soon, it's all black. Right? <laughs> well, fortunately, that's about what we want, is all black up here, so I can do that now. Yep. I 
crow for me, by the way. A hunter bags him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, if I were actually 